नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुदस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुदस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुदस् फंदित बिखवे रोगो फंदित गांडो फंदित सलंग तस्मातिह भिखवे अफंद मन चेतसा विहरी एवं हि वो भिखवे सिखितबंती फ्रेंड्स इन दम सो वी वर् डिस्कसिंग यव कला सूत इन लास्ट मंथ एस वेल एस ऑन यस्टे एस वी डिस्क इट्स अ वेरी इंट्रेस्टिंग सूत इफ ई क्विकली रन थ्रू सम कैंड ऑफ समरी बट so far we have discussed so basically buddha delivering the discourse explaining to the the monks and he starts the sutta with two interesting similes <coughs> the first simile is where uh, he is mentioning about uh, six people some strong people <coughs> coming from six directions and using flails so they are attacking they are striking the sheaf of barley so we can take any kind of grains uh, <clears throat> and uh, as a result of this attack this kind of striking so all these grains become separated from the husk and continuous attack continuous struck will cause it to become even powdered and uh, then buddha mentioned even the seven person is approaching the same place and he too used the flail to struck those sheaf of barley and as a result of that it further become powdered almost and uh, so the point with the highlights here is as a typical world beings we are subjected to various sense impingement through the eyes we are getting so much of different sights we are seeing various sights but ultimately what happens is that the mind get agitated mind start thinking mind become overwhelmed by various uh, kinds of uh, these sights and ultimately mind become engulfed with too much thinking sensual conceptual proliferation and various other defilements and on the other hand uh, ears through the ears we can hear various sounds odors and uh, as a result of that <coughs> uh, this uh, sounds are overwhelming the mind and mind become agitated again defiled similarly the nose also causing to various uh, say incense and various other odors and as a result of that so again mind get agitated similarly the to- tongue similarly the body and again the mind itself is taking different kinds of uh, mental phenomena and ultimately mind itself get agitated so that means even though we are quite uh, knowing that all these senses are to be quite healthy and they should function properly and we are quite gifted to have all these senses in at their best perform level but still if you are not mindful about how we are using them ultimately they make lot of trouble in ourselves kind of internal turmoil can be happened because of irres- irresponsible unguarded kind of sensual activity sense activity so that is one simile and the corresponding teaching that buddha wants to mention and there he highlights the gross nature of this whole process it's a kind of a gross thing so mind is continuously agitated or again and again agitated and subjected to various kinds of defilements and kind of a disturbance on the other hand he is giving the next simile that is very interesting and quite uh, uh, we can say quite quite a subtle simile where he mentioned uh, there was a war between the devas and asuras and during that war so the devas won the battle they was won the war and ultimately they bound the king of the asuras he is called vepachitti and now they are bringing that asura vepachitti to their assembly hall called sudhamma <clears throat> so there buddha mentioned there are uh, five kinds of bonds are there 
so his limbs four limbs as well as the neck being bound and uh, interesting point here is in case if vepachitti thinks devas are righteous and the asuras are unrighteous and i want to be with the devas let me enjoy with devas then he feel free he start enjoying all the luxuries sensual pleasures available in the deva realm provided he has to think okay devas are righteous asuras are unrighteous but it is highly unlikely because he is an asura he is uh, attacking the devas so what typically may happen is he may think devas are unrighteous asuras are righteous so i better release from devas and i need to go back to asura realm the moment he think like that what happens all the tightenings all the shackling become more and more tightened and he become bounded so the point put the highlights here is that this tightening bounding this binding all this shackling is totally dependent on the thought happen in the vepachitti's mind it is not like a typical binding that we have today but it is a thought dependent binding either his release or entanglement is totally dependent on his own thought so now buddha mention even subtle is the maras bond so as we discussed yesterday all of us are under the influence of the maras bond and there buddha interesting dimension evan sukumam ko bikave vepachitti bandanam sukuma tarang mara bandanam even though this uh, vepachitti is bond is uh, subtle even subtle is this uh, maras bond and in conceiving one is bound by the mara and by not conceiving one is fraud one is freed so the conceiving is the most important part so whenever we conceive we are being bound by the mara if we are not conceiving then we are freed from the mara in pali it is mentioned manyamano bhikkave baddho maras amanyamano mutto papi mato so if we are continuously conceiving i centered conceiving i concentrated thinking imagining so then we being bound by the mara if we are not doing so then we are released from the mara but unfortunately what we all are doing is the same thing so we being bound by the mara the moment the moment that i think okay i am the best i am the bad i am the good i am the vip i am the commoner whatever it is so i making mind making i related thinking ultimately become a strong cause to be bound to the mara now there are sort of uh, five scenarios with the highlights in this uh, yavakalapi sutta and those are very interesting and very subtle thought formations how our mind works some very subtle internal workings of the mind is highlighted in this uh, yavakalapi sutta and the first one is related to the manjana so that means the imaginations very much like this conceiving so we can we are tempted to conceive i am i am going to be rich i am going to be say old i am going to be reborn so likewise i mean different ways of conceiving happen within our mind and buddha mention it's a kind of a disease kind of an illness kind of a what's called a, a tumor and even it's a kind of a dart so conceiving in that sense even though we even unknowingly we do it so the moment we are highlighting as a person as an individual as i highlighted as i so we are being bound so that is one part then the story is not end there then we are coming up with the second so that is where the engine where buddha mention the craving related kind of a trembling happens within ourselves so i actually given another simile for that suppose that uh, say we have uh, magnets 
six magnets are available, but those magnets assume that being powered by electricity. So when the power is available, so these back, these coils become magnetic. Assume now you have kind of a uh, iron core, iron ball in the middle. So what happens if we power a particular magnet, a particular coil, what happens? So being, we are being attracted, right? That particular iron ball being attracted to that one. Assume that when it is trying to being attracted, suppose the opposite magnet get activate, then it's trying to pull to that direction. So likewise, if I am making kind of a random or any sort of uh, uh, powering up of those different coils, so now this ball can't retain silent, right? Can't retain still. It depend. It is trying to be pulled by various these magnets. So that means kind of a movement is there to that iron ball because of this attraction. So whenever an attraction is in operation, so this the ball being attracted to that direction, attracted to that direction, change it, move into that direction, move, move into that direction. Now that means whenever attraction is there, a desire is there, craving is there, what happened to our mind? Our mind is constantly being pulled to various directions, either through the eyes, either through the ears, either through the nose, tongue, body, mind itself. So the stability of the mind, stillness of the mind is fairly disturbed because of this attraction, because of this craving. So ultimately what happens is a kind of a trembled mind. So mind can't stay quiet, mind can't stay stable, still, because of this continuous attractions happen through various directions. So till craving is operating like this, so the mind is always subjected to such kind of a trembling. It's quite vulnerable. We don't know from which side the another next attraction would come. So while you are keeping your eyes open, probably the attraction may come or triggered through your eyes. While you hear a particular sound, a beautiful song, your mind get attracted through, triggered through your ears. Similarly, when a good smell comes, your mind get triggered through the nose and you being attracted. So likewise, we are constantly being attracted, driven by all these different kinds of triggering process. So the ultimate result is mind is agitated. So to which part that are we giving uh, the preference? Are we giving preference to the sights? Are we giving preference to the smells, odors? Or are we giving preference to the sounds? So those are dependent. So very much like we are always under such kind of an attractive process. Till craving is in operation, so we are very much like helpless, running to this direction, that direction, this direction, that direction, like a, like a crazy person. Now this is under the situation of engine, we are powered or triggered by craving, our mind is in a kind of an oscillation. Now when that oscillation happens, I comes out, a person comes out, an individual comes out. When triggering happens, okay, I am, I comes out, so I being highlighted. Say if you see a beautiful sight, so you being attracted, I want it. So immediately you will become a person, your I, sense of I comes stronger and now you want to have it, you want to possess it. You want to immediately possess it because otherwise another person may take it. So kind of a competition is also come to the picture because another person also may have the same effect. Others are also trying to act being attract. So we are in a such kind of a situation within our minds. So triggered by craving, therefore such kind of pulling mechanism is operation, Trigger, triggering process is in operation. So as a result of that, I make in mind making constantly happening. And we are being bound by the Mara. Now the third part, Buddha highlights, is what we started yesterday. That is the Pandana. That is again an agitation, but it's a different kind of agitation. 
now as we discussed yesterday we are constantly dependent on something from our childhood as an infant we are bound to our mother our father so i am quite dependent as a child as an infant to the parents so i want my parents i want my mom to be with me i want my father to be with me i am fully dependent okay i am being breastfed i am dependent on that i am given some food i am dependent on that then we become little uh, say elder we become a child again we may have a lot of toys maybe friends cartoons so you are dependent on that uh, cartoon can you remember how much we were dependent on certain cartoons <laughs> favorite cartoon i can remember woody wood pecker was my favorite at that time <laughs> so dr honda hita why not so very dependent quite interested and i am if it is not possible to view that i am feeling really frustrated then we become further grown and i am becoming a teenager now i have different sets of desires i am now now i am dependent on so many other things maybe my friends maybe my teachers and many other dependencies are now there and maybe now a young person may have a fiance fiance may be dependent on that then you become married now you are dependent on your husband you are dependent on your wife you are dependent on your children say now you are an employed person and you are dependent on your job your family status your social status your salary now you are in big trouble because of the taxing right <laughs> so all these are dependencies right so much dependent on so many things so we love to be dependent as we discussed yesterday constantly dependent constantly dependent and uh, as elders now we are dependent on our children so they have to take care of us and we love them and without them we can't live if they don't call give a call after some time after a month at least fully upset parents become really depressed if they don't get a call from their children living abroad many many things are there isn't it so fully dependent so we are constantly dependent on so many things but the problem is on which what we are dependent are constantly changing they are not within our control they are beyond our control they are constantly changing they are impermanent and they don't have their own kind of a command so they are also changing and so we being dependent on that we also being trembled because we are so attached to that we are so dependent on that so very beautifully buddha highlights this in uh, dutiya dwayang sutta so buddha even taking into the very subtle level so buddha mention uh, this i consciousness happen because of two things i and the form but the i constantly changing i means e y e i it's constantly changing the operation of i constantly changing the form also constantly changing the combination of those two resulting the i consciousness so if these two the sources are changing causes are changing how about the result result also then has to be changed you can't have a stable permanent kind of a result if the causes are constantly changing quite vulnerable so therefore buddha mention so i consciousness is therefore since it is dependent on the other two factors it's also changing vulnerable impermanent unsatisfactory and all the other corresponding actions say the contact then the feeling the perceptions everything is fully dependent on the previous previous uh, early causes when all those causes are subject to change the results are also subject to change so whenever we are dependent on something which is subject to change which is completely inconstant and uh, beyond our control it has it is itself is dependent on so many other factors so what happened to us when we are 
hold in that when we are dependent on that so we are also subject to kind of a trembling say while you are traveling in a bus so you are holding a bar right i mean the seat or you are maybe uh, wearing the belt why the vehicle is changing we are vehicle is always moving and we expect some kind of uh, stability so we are bound to that the moment the vehicle collapse from a precipice what happened to you are you safe <laughs> so we we but we expected kind of a stability so that's why we put the belt right so what happened the vehicle is collapsing so we are in a deep deep trouble the so same thing so we are always trying to hold things grasp things dependent on things expecting kind of a safety expecting stability if i am dependent on that maybe i am safe but the problem is all those are not fully uh, controllable they themselves are depending on so many other factors so we are in a very vulnerable situation so therefore buddha mention <clears throat> so till we are dependent we are vulnerable till we are dependent we have trembling we have we are going through kind of a wavering nisitassa chalitam so who whenever the mind is attached to something whenever mind is holding something whenever mind is dependent on something that attached thing the dependent thing when it is changing you being the dependent are subject to change you are being trembled you are being shocked you are being sort of uh, disturbed nisitasa chalitam the opposite is anisitasa chalitam nati if there is no dependency if you are completely free if you are completely independent then what's the situation then situation is you, there is no any other external component to to itch you to trigger you to change you so you are your mind become completely independent so the body can't be ever independent so body being dependent on so many things so body constantly subject to different kinds of changes aging process changing process unavoidable depends on the weather depends on the climate depends on the food oxygen so many things so don't expect to have a perfect body it's dependent on so many things and the moment that things are changing so you are going to change you are going to suffer in that sense but how about mind can we have a mind which is independent <laughs> so that is another interesting area that's what we discussed yesterday through satipatthana sutta so buddha is pointing out a direction where we can at least take makes the mind independent currently as we discussed just now we are fully dependent we love to be dependent unknowingly or knowingly we attach to something expecting kind of a safety and as a result of that we are dependent but what we are dependent on is constantly changing as a result of that we are suffering we are subject to kind of a trembling and when we are getting that shock tremble i comes out please help me so when the say vehicle is rolling from a precipice how are you how are you screaming please help me please help me isn't it you are you are changing i mean you can't bear it so on which you are dependent on is now collapsing now we were as citizens depend on the country situation economic situation when the economy collapses economic bankrupts so we tremble so when your job being lost you tremble how can i survive how can i maintain my family how can i teach my children so you being shocked so all this happens in a way because we are dependent we 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 are dependent on some all unstable things 
expecting safety from unstable situations. So then how about a mind which is free? So if, if it has to be free, then it has to be independent. The mind has to be an independent mind, not a dependent mind. Till the mind is dependent, still you, the mind may get trembled, mind may get wavering. So Buddha is taking out a kind of a strategy, bringing up a strategy to at least make the mind independent only for a short period. Now in some of the meditation, the, the situation is you are maintaining kind of a stability of the mind but fully dependent, fully absorbed to a particular object. And you assume that object is stable. But a complete opposite approach is happening in the vipassana as we discussed yesterday. So you are investigating all these different condition phenomena and as a result of those, that investigation, again and again you understand their impermanent nature, their unsatisfactory nature, their non-governable nature. And as a result of that, what happens within you, within the mind, is slowly mind will understand no point of attaching, no point of holding, no point of grasping. Let me give it up. So it's a kind of a natural letting go process now being initiated within the mind. It is not a forceful letting go. It is not a forceful abandonment. Rather, the mind starts kind of a natural abandoning process because it has understood. Now a very strong simile Buddha highlights here also. I don't know whether I have mentioned that last time. Suppose there is a nice couple. So this is a Buddha's simile, so don't blame me. Uh, so Buddha mentioned, okay, there is a nice couple. So this uh, young guy really in love with that uh, woman. And he really believe her, trust her. And now they are married. And so he is dependent on whom? His wife. Right? So he is dependent on his wife. So even if he, if wife gets sick, so he is little shocked. And if wife is uh, going through some trouble, so he is feeling, feeling that. He is troubled. And by the way, one day, one of his friends telling him that I have seen your wife with another man. Would that person believe that? Won't believe. Because he is so trusting that woman. Because she is beloved wife. After several years of uh, uh, love affair, they got married. So that is an added part from myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can't believe. So he just ignore. Another day, another friend come and inform the same thing. I have seen your wife at a particular place with another man. Another, another person also coming and inform the same thing. Maybe a relative coming and informing, okay, I have seen your wife at another place with another man. So again and again now he is being uh, sort of disturbed because of this shocking news. Now what, what he would decide? So rather than simply believing the others, what he going to do? He himself want to investigate the situation now. Suppose uh, maybe like going out, going to office, he may come from the another door <laughs> and just hiding and staying. Uh, one man come and this woman is behaving with that man. So the husband is watching, right? Another man comes, maybe in the evening. Husband is watching. Maybe tomorrow, same situation. Say he is going to office, but coming from another door, watching how wife is behaving. One man come in the morning, another man in the evening. Now, now what's the trembling happens in this man? Now you can imagine, I mean, now a complete change happens within himself. Now it is no more just believing, but is I, he become an eyewitness of the whole thing. Now he understands the reality of the woman. She is not trustworthy. She is not obedient. 
she is beyond my control she is not loving me i am being fooled i am being deceived now all these are uh, kind of changes happening within himself so he was trusting he was expecting some kind of happiness he was expecting some sort of uh, say stability some sort of uh, say truthfulness some sort of uh, controllability because she is my wife my wife should behave the way i want so that was the perception now everything are being challenged now ultimately what would be the decision to abandon to give up that means in today's terms to divorce now he is filed a divorce and fortunately good got a good lawyer <laughs> and thing was done now he he is no more the husband of that woman right next day also now he saw the woman with another man any problem in him no right no problem because now no more she is his wife and he know the behavior of the woman he know that she is not a trustworthy woman a faithful woman a faithful wife now he is not disturbed why he understood so why are we attached to form why are we attached to feelings why are we attached to perceptions why are we attached to various kinds of our mental creations and all these things are very much like we expecting happiness we are expecting kind of a controllability we expect they belong to me they may satisfy me we trust we have kind of a safety belief to all of these but the moment we are continuing the practice the vipassana investigation so the difference happening within our minds have to be very much like that husband's change of perception so we ourselves in that will understand okay what a kind of a change going on what a kind of a vulnerability is available within this body what a kind of a vulnerability is available within these feelings thoughts perceptions they are constantly changing how can i say they belong to me they may behave according to me how can i say like that so likewise the understanding is growing now when that understanding is available in that particular man's mind do you think that his friends have to come and ask him to abandon that woman not necessary because he himself has been fully convinced she is not a trustworthy woman she is not a faithful woman faithful wife no point of keeping her any more so he naturally will let go naturally will abandon naturally will divorce similarly within ourselves if we get the proper understanding through the investigation not blindly believing through proper investigation so that man properly did the investigation he himself become a kind of an eye witness of the whole thing so similarly within ourselves also in the vipassana process so we have to be a eye witness that's why we need to do our own experiment kind of a noble quest where we are investigating all different domains maybe the physical domain maybe the mental domain everywhere we believe that we may get kind of a safety we believe that something which may give some satisfaction the moment that we become more and more aware of this whole process kind of uh, develop this understanding what happens is that abandonment letting go dispassion is a kind of a natural process it is not kind of a forceful abandonment rather it's a natural letting go process so the mind starts letting go it is not you telling the mind to let go rather mind naturally start letting go so we are holding things because we don't know we are expecting kind of a satisfaction we are expecting happiness we are expecting kind of a faithful behavior of those whatever we are attached to but unfortunately they are not behaving as we wish they are not really faithful to us they are beyond our control so all these things are sort of insights understandings 
and uh, as a result of that the dispassion is inevitable so the dispassion happens within ourselves has to be a kind of a natural effect now when dispassion happens slowly the abandonment relinquishment letting go is in operation now as we discussed yesterday so when this process happens in a particular moment so mind may let go the whole physical phenomena whole body whatever physical it has let go without attaching to feelings suppose that it also has letting go it also has let go of without attaching to various signs marks perceptions assume that even you were capable of letting go that even if you are want capable of relinquishing all the different kinds of thoughts maintaining a mind which is free from thoughts free from thinking so that means you are not attached to sankara formations and even the different kinds of senses they are very much like not being disturbed while you are seeing you are capable of stopping the mind not being disturbed while you are hearing you are not being disturbed even though you can hear even though the smells are available you are not being disturbed even though you can recognize the smell something like that so that means the sense sense impingement are no more triggering you no more agitating you now you are having a different capacity to maintain a unattached mind relaxed mind so these things are happening in a kind of a progressive way so it is not immediately everything is possible say for example uh, when you are continuing your path continue your practice there may be situations while you are walking in your walking path and you are observing various phenomena and you are understanding how vulnerable they are how constantly arising and passing away they are how impermanent they are so when you are going through such kind of an understanding even though you see things various sights sounds smells etc now mind may not be interested of making a story out of that it doesn't mean that you can't see you may see you may hear you may smell you may taste and you may even get the contact and even thoughts may come but mind stop getting involved with them because it understood no point no point of getting kind of a close association no point of making a kind of a intimate relationship with in any with any of them so that understanding as a result of that understanding not merely because of a restrainment but rather because of an understanding now mind mind its own business <laughs> not getting involved mind is capable of becoming independent isn't it now previously it is fully dependent but now very much like independent when sights are available sights can't trigger the mind when sounds are available sounds can't trigger the mind sounds can't i mean the shock the mind even if shock quickly calms down kind of a damping effect is available shock absorbing is available <coughs> so that's why we are talking uh, resilience etc in mindfulness practice so you are now developing such kind of a resilience in your mind even though for a temporary moment that you being uh, sort of uh, disturbed you can quickly calm calm down yourself you can quickly relax yourself so this is how i mean this process may happen within ourselves it is not mere the- theoretical but rather we ourselves <coughs> has to experience this so are these kind of a thing available within ourselves say a kind of a shocking news happens we may feel it but are we able to come back maintain kind of a stable mind even after we hear that even after we see that we being little disturbed yes but again comes back coming back to the reference line 
coming back to the stable line of our mind. So that's why Buddha again and again highlights to return back to that stability, return back to that, say, the equa equator-like thing, kind of a reference line. So don't be agitated. Just be in the calmness, be in the tranquil tranquility level, equanimous level, kind of an equilibrium level. So as a result of that, what the yogi may experience is that the oscillations become less and less. So in your mind, previously you are oscillating to very higher magnitude. Say you are, whenever you get something beautiful or you are being rewarded, you are jumping to something and you are being elated. And uh, say you lose something, you lost something, you've been defeated, you fully collapse. So our oscillations are very high magnitude, isn't it? So the opposite is now happening in the vipassana process. You become less oscillating. You become more stable. So your oscillations are very less magnitude now. And once you receive something, you're being rewarded, you're being praised. Okay, I'm happy. Why not? But not elated. You are being just happy. Just a smile maybe. That's it. Okay, I got it. Maybe you lost something, you've been defeated. Okay, no problem. Maybe doing the next time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay, you can quickly come back. So the less oscillations in the mind. Now you are explain, uh, you are experiencing kind of a stable mind. So these are very these have to be very practical. So the oscillations become less and less. And uh, even oscillations happen, you can quickly damp yourself, quickly recover yourself. You can return back to the stable mind very quickly. So that is the most healthy mind in a way. Now scientific findings are there. It is not the hep kind of an elated mind which is more healthy. Of course, it's the, not the worried mind that we all know. So it is not the elated mind which is more healthy, but the more equanimous mind is the most healthiest status of the mind. So if you want to live, hep I mean, the long life, assume that you are all other physical conditions are in perfect situation. And if, if you all need to maintain the proper mind condition, so the, that proper mind condition is nothing but this equanimous equilibrium of the mind. Not elated, not worried. Even that is found through the science. Now, therefore, this practice helping us to maintain that stability. But interestingly, what happened immediately, I comes out. <laughs> I, you've been disturbed. You feel a little frustrated. You've been threatened. So the, uh, you may understand, so this eye-making, mind-making, is a kind of a disturbance. So that's why Buddha mentioned this uh, eye-making, mind-making is kind of a disease. This trembling is a disease. Shocking is a kind of a disease. So this shocking happens, you're being trembled, you're being attacked. You've been threatened. At that moment, the I, I-ness, the sense of I is highlighted. But the moment the mind is very relaxed, very calm, tranquil, that means I is fairly diluted. I making is almost like not available. So you are in a very relaxed, calm movement. Other than that, nothing is there. There is no I. One interesting principle <coughs> taught by uh, uh, Punna Mantani Putta, one of the great Arahants. So this is a story mentioned by Venerable Ananda to his uh, students, maybe the fellow monks. So he is with a lot of gratitude, he is mentioning, so when I was ordained in my early stages, this is, I was spending my early stages of my monkhood. Venerable Punna Mantani Putta was quite helpful to me. So he was constantly advising me, Upadaya tikho auso ananda asmiti hoti no anupadaya. <coughs> so what it means is, so in order to have the feeling of I, the sense of I, there is a prerequisite. What is that? The clinging, the grasping. 
So when the grasping is happened, grasping is available, then only the sense of I could come. I can come. A personality may come. Individuality may pop up. So without grasping, without holding, without clinging, I can't operate. I can't come out. Sense of I can't come out. So on the other side that we can imagine, we can think, that means if we are capable of maintaining a relaxed, unattached, non-grasping state of mind, where is I? Can't have I. <laughs> Does that mean that we would die? So that means that, I mean, we can operate without I. Then what happened to I? It is not an essential component. It's a, ma it's a mind-made component. I is an additional mind-made burden in that sense. So how many years Buddha lived without I? 45 years. Say, how many years, say for example, uh, another, say, Bakula Rahant, how, how many years he lived without I? 80 years. 80. 80. <laughs> So likewise, the arahants in that sense, so they were fully functional. So do you think that the Buddha was not functional? Buddha was fully operating, right? I mean, he has done the great teachings and four to five years he has established the order of Sangha and the Vinaya rules, quite comprehensive. And he was talking to the, you know, considering all the conventional rules and regulations, he was operating in that level as well. He's not ignorant about that. And he was talking about the very interesting principles the, of, of the human society and these great teachings, the Dhamma. Buddha was fully functional. So that indicates, so this I component is a mind-made component. So we unnecessarily have made this I again and again. Now that's why on the other hand, <coughs> the lesser would be the I making better would be our calmness of the mind. Suppose you are simply walking, you are observing various phenomena, investigating various phenomena. So during your walking process, how many times you prepared I? <laughs> Can you remember? So probably we forget forget even to prepare I. I mean, is it you? as an individual that I want to become enlightened, I want to become a Sotapanna. The moment that you get such kind of feeling, you feel frustrated. You feel unsatisfied. Still I couldn't become a Sotapanna. I am still a worlding. Because I is there. So till I is there, so you can't become an Arahant. <laughs> That's, that can be guaranteed, isn't it? So till you f they have the sense of I, you, you, we can't become an Arahant. So that means if we are to get closer to Nibbana, on the other hand, what we should do? To minimize I making, to reduce this I making, to reduce this mind making. It doesn't mean that we destroy ourselves, it doesn't mean committing suicide. <laughs> It means that we are f still fully functional, fully enjoying, but without an eye. So that capacity is available in the human mind. So that's the message from the Buddha in others, another way. So, so this I component happens according to this part of the Yavakalapi Sutta. I am is a palpitation. I am this is a palpitation. I am going to be, this is a kind of a palpitation. So palpitation is kind of a trembling. So when trembling happens, you prepare I. You get the sense of I. If there is no palpitation, if there is no disturbance, if there is no shocking, wandering, trembling, very relaxed, calm, stable, still. So that means, if there are no graspings, if there are no clingings, you can't have any I, you don't have any dependencies, 
No dependency means you are independent. You being independent, what's the result? So let me take the Buddha's words now. So, anisitasa chalitang nati. So you being independent, there is no wavering, there is no movements within you. That means you are getting a stable mind. Chalite asati pasadi. That means you are being tranquil. You feel like floating, like say pasadi means bodily tranquility, mind, mental tranquility. You can't feel burdened. You can't feel heavy. So you have to feel lighter because I is not there. <laughs> you feel heavy, like today one someone has mentioned. You are, why you feel grumpy? You have strong eye. So we can recognize from each individual of us. So when the moment that you feel grumpy, you feel, you know, sad, worried, really drowned, heavy, strong eye. But you are in a very light, uh, kind of a soft smile, not elated, kind of a, you know, very relaxed, less eye making. That very sure, less eye making. That is the pasaddi, tranquility. Then Buddha mentioned, pasadya sati, nati nohoti. So you have that mental calmness, tranquility, bodily calmness, bodily you feel little relaxed. So that means there is no craving operating at that time. The craving, you know, we discuss, is a kind of an agitation factor. Now craving is not operation because you are quite satisfied. You are still no craving. And if there is no craving, natiya asati, agati gati nahoti, there is no movement. There is no movement from this direction to that direction, there is no movement. Like in that simile, say the power cut, all the coils, magnetic coils are not operating. So what happened to the iron ball? Still. Remain still. No changes, no movements. So when the craving is cut off, so where the mind is moving? Nowhere. So the mind has to be still, naturally still. It is not that you are forcefully holding it to be still. All the forces are being cut off. All that power given to those six uh, coils stopped. Naturally, iron ball is stopped, still. Naturally, the mind has to be still. Agati gatiya asati, chutu papate nahoti. Then Buddha mentioned, if there is no movements, if there is no going here, going there, that, that means there is no arising, that means, that means there is no getting to new births. Chutu papate asati, neva idha na hurang na ubhe mantare. So if there is no such thing, no movements, no arising, no rebirth, no passing away, where are you? No I. You are not here, you are not there, you are not, not in between. You are not making a self anywhere. So Buddha mentioned this is the end of suffering. So you, you need to understand, so the moment eye-making happens, when the, you come to the picture, I come to the picture, you feel frustrated, you feel restless, you feel unsafe, you feel a little uncertain, what's going to happen tomorrow? Will I win the election? Will the same government would come? <laughs> so I, 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 I is there. But if there is no I, you are satisfied, you are you know, calm, relaxed, still. So therefore, the non-grasping mind has to be maintained for a while and to be experienced. And while experiencing, so we have to, even in a way, we have to enjoy it, we have to experience it, we have to be familiarized with it, allow it to stay for a while, just be, don't disturb it. So don't expect something more to happen. 
don't ask what next <laughs> just be isn't it i mean the moment you ask what next fabrication that means you are generating more sankhara what next so that is the indication that kind of a craving available you want to be you want to make something i want to be something i am not satisfied here right now so i want to have another new state so please tell me what next but if you are completely satisfied now so you are released you are relaxed still so therefore so the vipassana in that sense taking us to a different kind of a experience <clears throat> we being fully agitated in this whole sensual world attracted to this attracted to that pulled to various desires now there may be a state you may reach in vipassana we are desireless you are no more having desires at least for temporary period this is not a complete cutting off of the tanha you are not an arahant but at least temporarily your mind is still power cut is only for 5 minutes maybe new again they may regenerate the power again you been pulled to this direction that direction so similarly so we can't stay independent for a long time because our inner tendencies are you know programmed to attach so powerful even though we may understand the path we can't immediately do it theoretical understanding is not enough so dhamma sama actually trigger it you know i mean if you have a kind of a fear uh, if you have a kind of a doubt so dhamma sama may you know penetrate the whole thing and gives a lot of encouragement to jump but once you jump still the latent tendencies are again pulling you back come back come back <laughs> where am i where am i but again and again when this process is happening we getting more and more confident so the mind become more and more confident attaching to what holding what dependent on what nothing so you can imagine what a human capacity is what a mental capacity we as human beings have so that is the potential that buddha is highlighting or we can say catalyzing triggering and he being released he is telling monks i am not telling that something impossible i am telling something possible try to do this i am released so it's very much like uh, we being in a prison and some intelligent person found a key and he went out now he is giving us the key i am released please follow the path so this these are the rules you have to take the key there are the door put it to the key hole turn it to the right direction door will be opened come out why not <laughs> i have to attend a marriage in the cell in the prison so i can't go out <laughs> so that's why even the buddha come and tell you okay why don't you come out no no there's a upcoming election <laughs> we have so many reasons not to get released not to attain nibbana in that sense so we have so many responsibilities so many you know proposals so many engagements so many obligations so many duties so we we don't want to happen now itself if buddha come and tell you okay i will take you to nibbana say tata to everyone <laughs> how many of you raise your hand <laughs> are you ready to give up everything <laughs> <laughs> very unlikely right so we still we dependent on so many things let me wait uh, buddha please wait till my daughter get married <laughs> she is expecting her first baby i want to take care of her <laughs> so many things are there so many excuses are there anyway so so the process is actually triggering ourselves or say uh, releasing ourselves to have the experience of unattached non grasping state of mind so again and again when the yogi is experience in that again and again he become confident yes i can do it let me stay there for a while not returning back he is trying to stay there for 5 minutes staying there for 
say 10 minutes so likewise he is seasoning that state he being familiarizing that state so maintaining kind of a release state of mind not grasping anything so that's why buddha mentioned anisito cha viharati viharati the term viharati means you are living there vase kanno you are living there you are inhabiting that state you are dwelling in that state that state for a while not just momentary experience but you have to enhance that you have to prolong that you have to live that so while walking say for example you are now developing kind of a mind state unattached mind state uninvolved mind state unentangled mind state mind may go and attach mindfulness will tell you again the fellow has being attached now remove it come back return back release again may be a beautiful song mind may go and attach because the past habits mindfulness will tell you again the fellow has gone out old habits are in operation so release it don't be in that come back so how quickly buddha asked us to come back with respect to sounds like this you can imagine what a teacher he is so what a kind of reference that he has given so when our mind go and attach to something and start enjoying that so buddha mentioned don't stay there you know it is unsatisfactory you have seen that you are now dependent you are expecting a sweet chili like we discussed yesterday return back to that home unattached state of mind relaxed state of mind release state of mind equanimous state of mind come back like a father like a mother so he is again and again telling that okay be in that state relaxed state not agitated state not elated state not worried state but the relaxed state unattached state so very very practical instructions throughout this uh, you know in the indriya bhavana sutta that's the whole theme buddha is telling so don't be in this agitated state of mind release state is where your home is an attached state is where your dwelling place is non grasping state is where your real home is so come back to your real home and more and more this has to be you know practiced you can't i mean you can't do it overnight because mind is so conditioned to attach to grasp now we are continuously practicing so again and again release in the mind relinquishing whatever it is attached and maintaining the mind back in that release state relaxed state enjoying that not asking what next just be just enjoying just be happy quiet free from inner chatter free from inner agitation free from inner chatter so it's a kind of an enjoyment in that sense because we being triggered with so many things now no triggering you are relax you are maintaining kind of a mental stability stillness now these are different ways actually we can take according to the dhamma whatever the way so you are maintaining a really relaxed unattached stillness of the mind so the opposite therefore would the mention is an agitation it's a it's a kind of a tumor in the mind it's a sort of a, what's that uh, dart in the mind but unattached state of mind release state of mind still state of mind non grasping state of mind is kind of a blessing so therefore buddha advised his disciples tasmati ha bikkave apanna manena chetasa viharissa mati evam hi o bikkave sikkitabba so monks you should train yourself restrain yourself i am going to live without trembling without agitation maintaining unagitated mind a relaxed mind so that is the kind of a restrainment buddha is telling us with respect to this part of the sutta 
ಅಪಂದ ಮಾನೇನ ಚೇತಸ ವಿಹರಿಸ ಮಾತಿ ಏವಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಓ ಬಿಕ್ಕವೇ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿ ತಬ್ಬಂಗ್ ಮಂಗ್ಸ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಟ್ರೇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಎಜುಟೇಟ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಟು ಮೇಂಟೈನ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎಜುಟೇಷನ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ರಿಲ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕಾಮ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ವಿಲ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ನನ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ಪಿಂಗ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಾರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನೋ ಮೋ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಐ no more making any defilements no grasping so you are away from the realms of the mara free from the mara so it's a kind of a very i mean very interesting and on the other hand very challenging and again require a lot of training even though we can talk we can you know explain logically argue still if you are not doing it if you are not practicing it it is completely out of our touch so the advice therefore the 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 instruction therefore is to cultivate that state of mind maintain that state of mind live in that state of mind so with that not i'll conclude today's dhamma sermon thank you very much for attending to listening so there are two uh, sharing of merits breakfast dana was offered by udaini wish to pass the merits to the late father mr n a tilakaratna and all the past away relatives who are in need of merit may this merit help all of us to realize dhamma and finish our sansari journey very soon uh, today lunch dana was offered by geeta gunatilaka in memory of late sister kamini kamini gunatilaka and beloved parents sisil and vivian gunatilaka may their sansari journey sansari journey be short by merits transferred to them may this also help kalalgoda yogis to fulfill their aspirations in dhamma path so today also we all have practiced to the best of our ability and participate in uh, dhamma discussion and listen to a dhamma sermon and all the merits we accumulated let's share with all the celestial beings all the past relatives and whoever in need of merits and let's wish these merits help us also to be free from sansara while keeping these good wishes in our mind let's recite the traditional verses etavata cham hehi sambhatam punya sampadam sambhe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya etavata cham hehi sambhatam punya sampadam sambhe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya ಎತ್ತಾವತಾ ಚೇಹಿ ಸಂಬತ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಸಂಪದ ಸಂಬೆ ಸತ್ತ ಅನುಮೋದಂತು ಸಬ್ಬ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿಯ ಆಕಾಸಠಾ ಚ ಬುಮ್ಮಠಾ ದೇವಾನಾಗ ಮಹಿದ್ದಿಕ ಪುಣ್ಯಂತ ಅನುಮೋದಿ ಚಿರಂ ರಾಖಾಂತು ಸಾಸನ ಆಕಾಸಠಾ ಚ ಬುಮ್ಮಠಾ ದೇವಾನಾಗ ಮಹಿದ್ದಿಕ ಪುಣ್ಯಂತ ಅನುಮೋದಿ ಚಿರಂ ರಾಖಾಂತು ದೇಶನ ಆಕಾಸಠಾ ಪುಣ್ಯಂತ ಅನುಮೋದಿ ಚಿರಂ ರಾಖಾಂತು ಮಂ ಪರ ಇದೋ ಜಾತೀನೋತು ಸುಖಿ ಹೊಂತು ಜಾತೋ ಇದೋ ಜಾತೀನೋತು ಸುಖಿ ಹೊಂತು ಜಾತೋ ಇದೋ ಜಾತೀನೋತು ಸುಖಿ ಹೊಂತು ಜಾತೋ ಇಮಿನ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಕಮ್ಮೇನ ಮಾಮಿ ಬಾಲ ಸಮಾಗಮೋ ಸತಂ ಸಮಾಗಮೋ ಹೋತು ಯಾವ ನಿಬ್ಬಾನ ಪತ್ತಿಯ ಇಮಿನ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಕಮ್ಮೇನ ಮಾಮಿ ಬಾಲ ಸಮಾಗಮೋ ಸತಂ ಸಮಾಗಮೋ ಹೋತು ಯಾವ ನಿಬ್ಬಾನ ಪತ್ತಿಯ ಇಮಿನ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಕಮ್ಮೇನ ಮಾಮಿ ಬಾಲ ಸಮಾಗಮೋ ಸತಂ ಸಮಾಗಮೋ ಹೋತು ಯಾವ ನಿಬ್ಬಾನ ಪತ್ತಿಯ ಸಾಧು ಸಾಧು ಸಾಧು